Welcome back, everyone. Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me to another episode of Music with Nick. Today, I'm super excited. We're going to do another jazz fusion. Um, I wanted to say like jazz fusion um, master class on uh, what, what I mean, just the fusion players that I love. This is by, um, this is sponsored by RG. Thank you so much, RG for you know for giving us this content and uh, i think all the jazz fusion lovers out there do appreciate all these requests and i was just blown away by this one i mean i've pretty much been blown away by all of them you know but this lineup is just ridiculous like it's i mean we get we have jimmy herring which uh, i did a video reaction to he's just insane insanely good um I just love his playing and very, very clean. And uh, he was basically playing um, some beautiful delay uh, stuff. Uh, and then with John McLaughlin right next to him, they were like trading solos, beautiful stuff. So I'm going to do some Jimmy Herring from um, the, the, the song is called Transience. Uh, and this is from Lifeboat, the album Lifeboat 2008. So not too old. Uh, but I mean, you know, with ju jazz fusion, it, you know, you don't really notice. It's so, I guess, up to, you know, I mean, it's timeless. You know, you can hear some stuff from the 70s and and or some stuff from the 90s or, or something from yesterday. And we pretty much sound in that same, you know, vein of, of just musicians going to the max we got some yan hammer uh, we're gonna do bamboo forest uh from oh yeah 1976 love jan hammer to death um his style is just insane um and also his tone is just like I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Uh, I think greats like, you know, uh, like Dream Theater. Uh, um, what's his name? Jordan Brutus. I'm, I'm sure they took a lot from him or, you know, um, Derek Sherinian, guys like that. He's just an influence who, who's just like made his mark, you know, on what is what it's like to be a like a synthesizer or piano virtuoso, you know, with the. Uh, and uh yeah just amazing then we have oh my god violin legend Gianluc ponti uh we're gonna do tarantula from the imaginary voyage um man 1976 we have daryl uh Sch sturmer on guitar um so this one um i don't know i think i mean i've heard some john luc ponti uh, but not everything, you know. So then, this is something that I have not heard. Animal situation. We're going to do Seta Reticuli from Animal Situation. This is Thomas Dawson on guitar. Okay, I do know Thomas Dawson on guitar, of course. And um, Animal Situation. And then we got another Gianluc Ponti. The Amazing Enigmatic Ocean uh, album from 1977. This is Enigmatic Ocean Part 3 featuring guitar, like, I mean, guitar god <laughs> Alan Holdsworth on guitar. Um, amazing. Just amazing. I'm super happy to do this. Um, let me know what you think after the video, of course. Um, um, shout out to RG for picking these amazing musicians. And let's get on with the uh, with the show. So thank you so much for being here. If you like what you see, you can like, you can subscribe. Check out our Patreon page. We do full albums. We just reacted to Genesis, A Trick of the Tale. Amazing, beautiful, um, beautiful album. So check that out if you're interested. But let's get on with the songs. All right. And we're back. And uh Let's get on with the music and have a lot of fun. You know, grab yourself some coffee. I got some espresso right here. My my new beverage of choice. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, you know, get get comfortable. You know, um, I'll uh, do my best to you know add commentary and uh, you know talk of something interesting, of course. 
but I mean, but this music is pretty much like, what are you going to say? You know, it's like just so good. But I mean, I'm sure I'm, I'll find something to talk about. There's always something to discover with these guys. And it's just amazing music to react to because it blows your your mind, you know. So, okay, let's start it off with... Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Transience by Jimmy Herring. But I don't know what he's going to play. So that's the beautiful thing about here. That I have no idea what style or what, what he's going to pull off. So let's get into it. Here we go with uh, Jimmy Herring. 2008. Um, beautiful legato and you got um, some really cool phrasing going on there um, almost like it reminded me a little bit the distortion is um, I love that distortion like uh, I don't want to say Alan Holdsworth but I guess Holdsworth um, uses this distortion that I love so much now myself I even got a new pedal just to kind of like get a little bit closer to that. It's all about the delay and it gives your, uh, the electric guitar such a warm tone and it sounds almost more like a, you know, people call it more like an oboe sound, a sax sound, you know, just more like an, a wind instrument. And it's so nice to play. And then when you have your legato game on, it just like, it almost doesn't sound like a guitar anymore. And it's just beautiful. I think, um, but he's not copying anything here, like, uh, you know, 
um he's super original the the phrasing and the lines that he was playing beautiful before that i think um i don't even know if that was a guitar or a bass i think it, it sounded more like a bass that you know playing a solo but then again it did sound also like the thin uh, you know the the higher uh strings on the guitar so i'm a kind of bit lost there but um it was just very very beautiful I'm going to go back because I want to give that sax the, the full attention. But man, that solo was just, oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> This whole song, um, so it was the bass in the end that was doing this. Oh, let's wait for that for a second. Um, I thought I'd pressed pause. Um, but the whole, the chord progressions here were re very, very Latin and fused, you know. I mean, a bit, but very dreamy. It was just very easy to get into, you know. Um, sometimes we listen to some stuff. And especially with RG, you know, he he likes to go hard um, on the on the on the jazz, uh, especially on the fusion. Um, but this is this was more like this was very easily digestible by any, you know, uh, I don't know by uh, at least people that listen to guitar, you know, like maybe Eric Johnson or Steve Vai or. I think anybody would like this, um, or just regular jazz. It wasn't too out there, you know. So very, very, um, very easy to listen to, and very n just beautiful, you know. It was just every everybody was the the drums were a lot. Um, there was a lot of um, um, I don't know. Just it was just very comfortable, you know, to listen to. It wasn't too too um too aggressive and um i think the bass was doing a, f a a fabulous job um everybody you know and then uh, but i mean the highlights of course uh was the, the solo and then that sax solo also very not too much i mean sometimes you know uh when p when players play i guess 
I don't know, that saying less is more. I don't know if that applies for Jazz Fusion because it's all improv, but it was just very nice and easy to listen to, and it was a great solo. I think by Jimmy uh, and then by the sax player, by the bass player before that, and the drumming was just beautiful. It was more like, it sounded like the typical Pat Metheny, um, just very like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it was just very serene and and there was it was not too noisy it was very nice easy listen so yeah great track um okay now um let's go with with uh the amazing jan hammer um this is bamboo forest let's go back here because so i did start it for a second there so let's go This is the be I love this tone, like the 70s tone of Jan Hammer, because uh, I remember being unaware of him for years and years when I was into Aldi Miola and is, I think, Land of the Midnight Sun and Elegant Gypsy. I don't know exactly on what tracks, um, but I think he's on a lot of um, early Aldi Miolas because he would trade solos with, with Al and, and would use that same tone and he's i i always when i would listen to that i was like who is that is that a like a syntax or who is playing like this and it was all this time it was him so when when he just started right now it, rem it takes me back to albums the early 70s albums of of ali miola which are just fantastic fusion masterpieces elegant gypsy casino land of the midnight sun electric uh, rendezvous and there's just so much good stuff Ho i think there's one whole hotel splendido um there's so much good stuff by aldi miola check him out if you have if you're a fan of jan hammer and you haven't heard aldi miola you have to go back and listen to that stuff it's just mind-bending stuff those two are just on fire and also I think on the first album, there was some uh, Jaco Pastor Pastorios um, on the bass, which is just, it's sick, you know? It's, like, it's sick how good these guys are. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's go back. But beautiful intro here by Jan, and let's get into the song. <laughs>
album is called oh yeah man this is good i don't know if this is Gianluca ponti but it could also be um i don't remember the name but the uh the amazing violinist i think benny uh from mahavishnu uh, i don't know I, I don't recognize the style yet um i haven't heard him enough but this boom, 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 boom. it's just like you know you know just listen um and what i've um there's like a lot of confusion going on with um with people they don't really appreciate the difference between fusion and prog and they say oh no 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 this is not prog this is fusion it's all fusion and i'm like well i mean in in essence yes you know i mean like yes or or genesis or but you can't really call it fusion because those are not jazz guys they're rock guys and i think fusion is jazz players playing rock music you know that's what, what's happening right here and um that's fusion rock you know jazz rock that but it's jazz players it's mostly jazz they know their field and then Prague is rock players who mess with a little bit of jazz, a little bit of classical music, a little bit of world music, everything together. But I, I think it's very clear what jazz, what fusion is and what Prague is. And a lot of people in the comment sections are like, no, 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 this is fusion. The Prague, the Prague, the Prague term is like just something they came up with. But, I mean, you have to kind of divide, you know, you, there's progressive rock, then there's progressive metal, there is neo-prog, there's all these different categories because they are different. So it's just kind of like, I don't want to get into any debates with these people because they, they you can't change their minds, you know. I mean, if, if somebody thinks that yes is fusion, then... And, and and they're basically I've been there like I saw a comment I've been listening to yes since the 70s and I don't know where this prog term came out so he since the 70s he has denied that yes is progressive rock you can't change his mind so yeah okay let's go back you know let's go back a couple of seconds and let's take this in this is a great riff here great groove they got going on <laughs> guys like this line right there i have to listen to that again right now um okay this here this was one of the most interesting things i've heard all week just to go out so much you know and just to come up with a melody that's not hum harmonically uh, you know correct and make something so beautiful i mean listen I, let's see if i if I find it, but this. 
Okay, that was the oh, I don't, already switched the goddamn song. Okay, let's go back to um, Bambi Forest. Let's try. I just want to try. Okay, it was around here at the end. That's just what I love about Jazz Fusion. They come up with these lines and they just take you into the stratosphere. And that's what I love about this music so much, you know. Um, that's why I've always been a Fusion guy. I've, I don't know, I was listening to this stuff without even knowing what it was. I just found, like, one of my dad's albums. Like, I just saw this guy staring at me and he looked super weird with these, like, Ray-Bans, you know. And a weird haircut, and it was Aldi Miola, you know, like the, the the essential Aldi Miola, and I was I, I was like, okay, and then he was holding a Les Paul, and I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, it's, this must be some like blues, you know, and I don't know, and then I just put it in, and then boom boom, boom boom, boom 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 boom, you know, um, Spanish, uh, I think it's called Spanish race with the devil, uh. On the on a Spanish highway or something, and my my life forever changed. Like I was like, it's ridiculous. Who who plays like this? And then I looked at the year. It was like seventy four or something, seventy five, seventy six, and I was forever hooked on Aldi Miola and I everything I could get my hands on. But I I didn't. I was not prepared for everything else. You know, I was just um, sticking to. And then again, also Aldi Miola played a style that I'd already kind of like discovered, you know, a little bit of Santana here and there, you know, the classics. I don't know really jazz fusion Santana. We haven't gone there. But um, before even getting into Miles Davis or Coltrane or Alan Holdsworth or Scott Henderson and all this stuff, um, it was Di Miola who basically opened the door for me. So I, I love... I love to hear Jan Hammer whenever I can. So now another guy who have who's collaborated with Aldi Miola, who I've known for years, Jean Luc Ponti. When I heard the writer strings, it blew my mind, you know. And Aldi Miola, Jean Luc Ponti, and um, um, John McLaughlin, you know. Uh, well, first Paco de Lucia, uh, they did the Friday Night in San Francisco, and then they re-recorded it for in a studio version but they also did another guitar trio with McLaughlin and um uh oh no that was called the, yeah the right of strings was with Gianluca Ponti but they also did the guitar trio twice um in a studio version and then um with La Estiva beautiful i just love that song so much the intro to the whole record uh it's from the 90s i think it's 96 um but then the Friday night, and then he when when we went to see him last time, he was talking about he re, he was gonna release Saturday night in San Francisco. That has never been released. I I haven't even heard that. But um, can't wait. But now let's go with Gianluc Ponti Tarantula from Imaginary Voyage. Here we go. <laughs>
to the solo, but um, there's a story that I have to tell you guys about Gianluc Ponti. So this was around, um, oh, man, it was way before I met Alexia. So I had a girlfriend and she was a violinist and she was very popular in our little town of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. And she was just like the, you know, the hit uh, on the boardwalk and she would play there live with her brother and um so we met and we started to to date and blah 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 and then soon i was playing with them in the band and um and they would always ask me and these are classically trained from they were from when they were kids right and and um and they would always ask me like how do you improvise so well like why are you where do you get all these scales from and i was like well you know I don't know, like, I just don't read that much, you know, like, because they would only read, they would only, I remember, um, I took out some, I don't know, like, Ingwe Malmstein, and I put it in front of her, and he was, she was like, doo -doo 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 she was just reading it off the paper like nothing, she taught me a lot how to read way quicker, but, but then the improvisation wasn't there. They were just classically trained. They only knew classical music. So at the time when we when we we would do like something like Santana or anything that was more rock, um, even Gypsy Kings, they she would just like I don't know. She wouldn't even know what to do. And her brother also, and uh, and um, and they were just freaking out of that. I would just pull out like scales out of my arm just like randomly i was just improvising over the chords and i was like how don't you know this i mean you've been studying like literally since you were kids you know music theory and but the thing is since they didn't study i guess i guess they only studied how to read music but not really theory i don't know i was just confused because i was like well i just i just play what comes into my mind in that moment and um but then i told her hey Listen to Gianluca Ponti. I think this is gonna open your up your your mind. And then she heard him, and she didn't understand anything. She was like, "I don't see what's so great about him." And I was like, "Okay, I guess you don't. You just don't understand jazz." <coughs> and that was it. I never really talked about it again. We only lasted after this. There was too much musical tension uh, for some reason. There was too much competition, not from my side, but from them and it was just over unfortunately and um yeah it ended so they're still playing in Puerto Vallarta and they're pretty um well known there and they have tons of records but this it's all covers you know they just play other people's music so whatever but I was just like when I when she told me that she didn't find Gianluca Ponti interesting after hearing this again here I'm just like baffled you know you I guess she wasn't ready for that, you know, but she would play some damn good Vivaldi, you know, but that's about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, that was amazing. Great revelation from me, Daryl Sturmer. Um, you got to be, you know, to play the gua, the wawa, the guagua, the wawa, right, it's, uh, it's, it's an art form, you know? I mean, you have to know what you're doing um, to make it sound original and, you know, like, I guess, like, the way... I don't know if it was Walter. Uh, I, I don't think it was Walter, but on Haitian Divorce, that Wawa. Actually, wait. No, no, I'm totally confused. That was the talk box. Uh, because we saw uh, a cover band, uh, Steely Dan, here in Denver. And they call, they're they called uh, Citizen Dan. And the guy, he doesn't have a talk box. So he plays that solo with, with, a, with a crybaby. But um, um, it's just very difficult to come up with something good using a crybaby something that really sounds like this right now this is a guitar player that knows how to use a, the crybaby uh beautifully and uh great lines man beautiful very very cool very nice contrast with Jean-Luc Ponty man and the bass everything was fantastic so far this marathon is just like you know finger licking good <laughs> Okay, so this is now something I um I'm gonna have to blow up here to pronounce. So this is called Animal Situation, but the song is called Sieta Retiku Retikioli. Wait, wait a minute. Reticuli. Seta Reticuli. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, uh, well, here we go. Uh, never heard before. Um, although it does, it does sound like something I've animal situation. Give me a second. No, they only have one album. And, uh, from 2022. So yeah, this is pretty new. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Very intrigued because this is going to be good. It's going to be good. Here we go. like Alan Holdsworth the total the the chords are literally from like I I don't know like Spear of Innocence um bum, 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 wow beautiful Jesus <sighs> the same style I mean wow crazy let's let's get it.
I don't know. I guess somebody cracked the code. You know, this is literally like um, this this is the this is the um the most Holdsworthian <laughs> um guitar player I've heard. That's not Alan Holdsworth. This is literally like there, but there's so many little like nuances of his playing of his like phrasing in there but then again at the same time he's very original he sticks to his own you know improvisation which is really really unique because usually when you listen to alan holdsworth um um i don't want to call it like imitators but people that are very influenced by him you know then it's it comes to the point where it's like, well, it just sounds literally like Holdsworth. This guy here, wow, I'm going to follow this this guy. Oh, man, Animal Situation. I've never heard of this, but it's literally like, it's like listening to Alan Holdsworth, like uh, literally. Um, beautiful, beautiful, the, the same tone on the guitar that's literally... Uh, the uh, the pedal that I uh, that I bought to sound like this because I wanted that warm guitar. It's a distortion, but it has this something that adds you that adds to it. And then when you play legato, you get these beautiful lines. And and this guy's just killing it. The chords are amazing. Um, the drumming sounds very Holdsworth. The 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 whole idea and concept sounds a little bit like um if you listen to S uh, spheres of innocence by alan holdsworth on the album of uh, warden it's called warden uh, cliff warden cliff tower um check that out um i think yeah and the, i mean but this guy the way he improvises while you know giving us that feeling of alan holdsworth the school the phrasing is there. Um, just the, when you listen to like years and years to Alan Holtzworth and then you listen to this, you're like, yeah, he's definitely in influenced and he has studied the guy. So it's beautiful to hear, especially in 2023, uh, something that came out in 2022. And, and I'm sure he's a young guy. So blessing. It's a blessing to have uh, people like that, you know, people that still dedicate you know to study this music because it's like we don't have alan holdsworth anymore and he was very unique so to get that you know style st to have that style still going that's just amazing and this guy is just like phew, that's one of the best guitar players i've heard in years you know <laughs> it's crazy very very good beautiful beautiful phrasing beautiful lines Beautiful control. Um, what can I say? You know, wonderful. Very, very cool. Thank you, RG, for introducing me to this guy. I'm gonna follow um, this guy closely. Um, I think is there something in the notes? Give me a second. Thomas Dawson. Okay, Thomas Dawson. I'm gonna follow Thomas Dawson on. Just to see him, you know, live or, you know, some, some videos. But uh, that's crazy how good he is, how, how, how close he sounds to, to Holtzworth. I'm sure Holtzworth would have been, you know, like, man, you know, you're, you're killing it, you know, because Holtzworth was always very critical of his playing. So um, I'm almost, um, you know, happy that he waited, you know, because it's, uh, it's almost too good. Um, but I mean, again, I guess there's nobody who comes close, you know, uh, on the guitar. But this guy is already there. He's already there. He's uh, so maybe in another two, three years, he just plays just just like him. I mean, he already plays like him. But I don't know. I just don't wanna. I would never wanna say, oh, this guy's better than my favorite gu guitar player in the world. So, but yeah, beautiful. Uh, kudos to to this guy to um thomas what a what a great what a great master because i've never heard of him so i'm sure he's very young but what a master already at at a tender age it's crazy okay let's keep let's keep going <laughs>
Beautiful. I, I'm almost sad that um, I only have one friend who is as uh, big of a Holdsworth fan as I am. And, um, but I wish I had more people I could share this, like, this discovery with. I mean, of course, you guys. But then again, Holdsworth is not very popular. It's a very small fan base, unfortunately, because it is also very niche, you know, the playing. It's not for everyone. A lot of people don't understand it, and I get it. You know, I was there. I was actually, the other night I was thinking, as I, I think I should do a Have You Heard of the song that put me off um, because I was like, Hearing all this in school, we were in school and uh, we were in music school and people were talking, oh, Alan Holtzworth, Alan Holtzworth. And I was like, who is this goddamn Alan Holtzworth they're talking about all day? It would just come from like particular people, you know, and I, so who is this guy? And I, I did already know, you know, and pretty much I was into rock players. I was into, you know, Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and you know, and, and, uh, and Chris and Perry Telly and all these shredders. And we were trying to like get down the arpeggios and, and Alan Holtzworth. And I was like, okay, I have to listen to this Alan Holtzworth guy. And, uh, so I went home and since I'm into classical, you know, metal, I'm classical influenced like metal and, you know, all the scales are pretty much, you know, harmonic minor arpeggios and stuff. And, you know, I mean, and then so I was like, okay, I'm going to download a track. And I found one that said Prelude. <laughs> and I thought, oh, he's going to start, doo -doo 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 you know, some crap like that. And then he started and I was like, what the hell is he doing? What is this? It pretty much sounded like this, what we just listened to, Animal Situation. And I was like, no, 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 no. And I literally... For four years after listening to this, I did not listen to Alan Holtzworth. I was like, I don't know what you, I don't know what you hear with Alan Holtzworth. I, I have no idea what you, you know, I was just, I didn't get it. And then I tried it out again and I listened to Metal Fatigue, the, the solo devil take the height most. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I was, li I was literally like almost depressed that I had four years I'd passed on with, without listening to this guy. You know, I was just so shocked. I was like, I can't believe I rejected this music. But, you know, that it, it is what it is. You know, it happens. But uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do a reaction. It's not a reaction because I know the song, but I'll play it to you guys. And maybe I'll point out what I didn't like or what I didn't understand at the time. It was just too dense for me at that to at that moment. And that happens to a lot of players. It's like, what do you like about this? It's just like he's playing random notes. And that's where what's not. And that's not, you know. Okay, now we're going to go with this amazing album behind me right here. I can't, I can't do it. It's married. Um, Gianluca Ponti, Enigmatic Ocean, Part Three, and I don't even think I've heard the entire album, but I've, I think I've heard part of it, but I don't think I've heard this one. And even though Alan Holtzworth is on it, but I can't. I do know sometimes you don't have time for everything. I've pretty much stuck to his solo stuff, and some Gong and some UK, but that's it. But I don't know everything, so let's go for this and let's enjoy this last um, this last uh, song. Here we go.
beautiful, but it's the that's the old, that's the the young Alan Holdsworth. That is before he got that sound that I'm talking about. Let me show you this. Out. I have to unhook it. This pedal here. This pedal does wonders, and he used to um, use like eight of them on uh, live. This is what gives you that sound. The um, um, that Alan Holdsworth distortion with the, because it has so many delays, it has like eight, six or seven or eight delays running at the same time. And, uh, and here he, he already has his legato game on, but he still doesn't have that sound that sounds like a, for example, that Thomas had on, you know? Um, but I'm going to show you a song if it's not too long, um, that I think got where he got his inspiration from, of course, uh, but this is beautiful improvisation. And and I remember in a video where they tell him uh, in the 80s, like, oh, Mr. Holdsworth. Um, well, so um, well, some people say, you know, like Eddie Van Halen, they say that you're like the best guitar player in the world. And he's like, no, no. And I, I, I think that that should stop um, all that, you know, all that talk. And I'm just getting started. Like, that's what he said. He already had, I don't know, like five solo albums under his belt. And all this, UK, Gianluc Ponti had recorded this. And he was like, I'm just getting started. Like, I feel like I'm just getting good. And that's that's what Alan Holdsworth was all about, of self-critique. And he was very, very um Hard on, hard on on himself so you can see it in live performances he's just like ah shit you know even though he does something beautiful and that but what isn't good enough for him that it was i guess just a battle he would fight with himself that he was trying to reach a certain sound and a reach certain improvisation in that moment and maybe he wouldn't get it and he was just like ah oh, this is totally shit sucked that's why i think there was never any record now since his death, there's been like seven uh, live albums released, you know, by his daughters and friends. And, and they're beautiful. But I, I think if he was still alive, they wouldn't have been released because he was just very critical of his playing. But this is beautiful. I love the way he improvises here. But you can just hear that the tone is still very raw. It's more, It sounds like a guitar here, you know. <laughs> These two are just a match made in heaven. Um, I'm going to play this really quickly. I think I've already reacted. Uh, Alexia reacted to this, I think, on the channel. But I just wanted to give you guys that are watching, maybe that are new 
to Thomas or Holdsworth. Let me see. Have I done this? Oh, I think I haven't. Oh, man. Yeah, I haven't done it. Okay, but I just wanted to give you like a little... The tone that Holdsworth had um, at that time in the chords. And they do sound a little bit like Animal Situation got the inspiration from, which is beautiful. And which is like, just to do something like that. But let's let's listen really quickly. This is just a snippet. So here we have the Holdsworth sound that he had during the 90s and that spanned throughout the 2000s until practically until he passed away. But this is the sound that sounds more like a sax, more like an oboe. But listen to the chords here. So that's just like the, the suit and then check out the solo. I'm just going to like go for it. what i'm telling you that's why i'm in love with this guitar player because this guy can evoke such emotion in his playing that is i've never heard that before and anybody else maybe i don't know like david gilmer uh comes very close a very different style but um i think what's so cool about um 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 Thomas is that he has reached something where he could explore notes like these easily because he's already there. He has already like the technique. He has the the theory. And um, but this was one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite moments in a uh, especially on this album, that guitar solo, when he goes up those notes, that scale and then with his whammy bar. 
man, it just makes my skin crawl. I love it so much. But um, this was an amazing marathon. Thank you so, so much, everyone who's, you know, uh, been, <laughs> it's been an hour, but I have so much fun. So thank you, RG, for, for you know, uh, you know, giving me this time to explore and also to listen to, you know, what I have to say, all my rambling and dambling. And, um, you know, it's part of the, I guess it's part of the thing, you know. Um, but uh, I hope you did enjoy all the artists. I mean, we got a, an amazing, you know, lineup here. Just, I guess, like the best of the best. I mean, including, um, you know, this this newer, younger guy. Um, I keep forgetting his name. Got them. And Thomas Dawson. Thomas Dawson. Um, we got Jimmy Herring. We got Jan Hammer. Uh, we got Gianluc Ponti. Thomas Dawson killing it. Congratulations, uh, wherever you are. Um, I, I hope you get a, an interview very quickly on the Rick Beato show um, because we need someone like Holtz, Holtzworth, you know, on, on this planet. And then Gianluc Ponti and Alan Holtzworth and then a little bit of Holtzworth by himself from his um, album. Uh, this was, um, what did I play? Um, uh <laughs> I just, sometimes I, I, it's from the Warden Cliff, Warden Cliff or Warden Clive. I think it's Warden Cliff Tower Record. The song was um, Sphere of Innocence, if you want to check it out. But I might react to it in full um, with Alexia. And um, But yeah, thank you so much, guys, for, for checking out the channel, for listening to this great fusion rock with me. And um, I hope you did enjoy. Thank you, RG, for making me sit down and listen to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music with you and everyone. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.